nuclear micro reactor that will probably help. Do you guys know about nuclear micro reactor? Mm. Is that the stupid That's army awesome. project? Let's do that again. <laughs> army has this. I pretty much based off of micro reactors, but basically put a micro reactor in the field mm -hmm. to provide power in mm -hmm. combat situations. Oh, the SLE. Yeah, and it's one of the dumbest ideas. All like they're well, like, so. What, what makes you think that? So this was this was one of the because I, I think this person I'm working on a micro oh. reactor. <laughs> 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 my, my putting it in a combat zone <laughs> is idiotic. So oh, this, this, this was this is dating back to I want to say the fifties or sixties when the army was experimenting. Oh, they're doing it again. They're going back. Okay, well that was <laughs> there was a lot of problems back then. Basically back then they were testing it, but you know like this was like very controlled environments and all that. And the rods, there was only three rods, so it was hand controlled too. <laughs> so they were trying to pull it out four inches. The dude pulled it out twenty. <laughs> And uh, all the water instantaneously vaporized the steam. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was two guys who were like, in, like outside the area farther back. Uh, they died a few weeks later from radiation poisoning. The guy was operating the rod because of the water being flashed to steam. The rod he was pulling and paled him to the ceiling 30 feet above. Wow. Okay. Hmm. So, yeah. That was a bad accident then. You know, one, okay. of the, one of the big ones, that, that's, and then that's basically after that, the army essentially discontinued any okay. yeah. further experimentation on it. So I'm not coming after the micro reactors. No, 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 the army and mm -hmm. some of the decisions they make mm -hmm. aren't always the smartest. Of course, mm -hmm. of course like they're, they're always contentious decisions, but like, well, can we we run? just shooting at a nuclear reactor? You know, that's, that's, that's the target everywhere. Yes, so the people who are working on the design, they have that uh, concern in their mind as well. And now, of course, when you're working on something, um, something, um, a novel design, you know, accidents happen, people died when the first uh, airplane were invented, people are trying to figure out, lots of people died, now we are flying, an airplane is the safest mode of uh, transportation there is, like safe, yeah. most safe, um, safest. Um, so, um, when the first people went to the space, um, they also died. I remember one story uh, that was at the beginning, like for the beginning of the space uh, exploration. How did he die? I mean, you know lots of stories how what people died. So, those stories should not be um, stopping us from exploring. I mean, it goes without saying. Having said that, that in the, especially in combat situation, right? Like what happens, a bomb uh, hits your nuclear power reactor and everything becomes radioactive and that. So, let me reassure you here. We have uh, potential solutions here. Um, right, so, cool. so, so look at this fuel right here. These are really, really, really small fuel particles. They're called fuel particles, actually. And this is the fuel here, um, the metal fuel here. And then you have three layers, and there are bicycles as well, which have two layers. So this is pyrocarbon layer, one layer, other layer, and silica, uh, silicon carbide layer. So you have two layers of carbon, graphite, and all that. The special reactor fuel is, it contains all the fission products and everything inside uh, this uh, fuel, fuel particle. So nothing comes out of it. And in a scenario where you might have a bomb, you know, heating a nuclear power reactor and stuff like that, everything goes out. All the fission products are contained in, inside this um, fuel pellet. Nothing comes out. So basically, the pellet is just superheating in the system and so it's creating the, the steam, like the heating up the water to create the steam for the. Steam um, it does not use water. So these these are advanced designs. Um, in the first class, I discussed advanced reactor designs. So the advanced designs are smaller, essentially smaller designs. And one of the um, advanced aspect is uh, achieving high temperature. So I, I think we will probably discuss a little bit about PG is a limiting factor uh, when you're using water as a coolant. So water has water boils at 100 degrees centigrade temperature, right? So you you can already tell you can achieve very high temperature because the water starts to boil and phase change occurring. And whenever there is phase change involved, the chemistry becomes really complicated and you know bad things happen. Um, so that's why in the pressurized water reactors we will probably discuss this. Um, they, it's really, really uh, pressure, high pressure situation there, like 100, 200 atmosphere pressure, huge pressure. So at that pressure, um, you guys, can you guys know how that affects the boiling point, right? That's why in pressure cooker, right? When we pressure cooker, we increase the pressure and then the water boils at high temperature so that without boiling the water, and you can like retain more heat. 
So at higher temperature, at higher pressure, you can achieve um, higher boiling point for water. That means the water is not changing its phase until 350 degrees centigrade. Um, so, but that's the cap. You cannot get any higher output, thermal output from a pr uh, pressurized water reactor, right? So that's a limit for that. Now, that's why scientists right now are they working on this? Like, do you do you have anything to co comment? Like, do you? No, I was just no, no. I mean, okay. That looks like you probably <laughs> segue to start. No. But no, I'm just the 350. Um, okay. Uh, I'm I'm used to Fahrenheit, so I was just about to. Oh, yeah. oh, you guys. Uh, that's, I was you guys were uh, communicating. So, no, two, yeah, 50 is uh, in centigrade, right? Oh, okay. So now, um, how do you achieve higher temperatures, right? So we, you need to we need to get away from water. One option is um, um, other liquids like molten salt. Mm -hmm. There are all sorts of molten salts, and there have been extensive research on the types of salt and what are the types of coolant because the, the reactors are termed in terms of the coolants they use. Gas cooled reactor, molten salt cooled reactor, sodium cooled reactor pressurized water reactor. So all this water, molten salt, uh, helium, sodium, they are the coolant, right? So the coolant is what defines the type or character of the reactor, is, which is a big part. That's why it's a big part, because the coolant is... Um, so yeah, so now all this, all those salts, you can achieve higher temperature using those salts because they are not changing phase up until, let's say, 700, 800, 900 degrees centigrade temperature. And the reactor I'm working on, uh, I'm using helium coolant, and helium is gas, and it's not changing phase at all because like gas cannot change. Like where do you go? Like you have to go, um, what is called like um, plasma state to <laughs> uh, change phase. Um, so, so all those technologies you can achieve high temperature, 900 from 350 to now we are able to achieve like 700, 800, 900 degrees centigrade temperature. Now achieving high temperature is not an issue out of the coolant the issue that becomes now is the materials so you guys already know at that high temperature and pressure not many um, um, metals alloys and stuff like metals cannot can withstand that high temperature right so that becomes a limiting factor right now so achieving high temperature is not an issue in terms of the coolant anymore almost and all these things i'm talking about these are not it has not been uh, Test. I mean, this, they have been tested, but not commercially. Like just for experiment, for experiment purpose, uh, they had all these reactors, advanced reactor concepts. I don't believe there is one single um, commercial reactor out there that is advanced that um, incorporates advanced technology. But why? Uh, is there any? No. Why? They are just concept. Just concepts. People are uh, right now working on this concept, testing this concept, and then they, you have to license from the NRC, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, all that, and. Because nuclear is a big deal, like safety is a huge concern, so there has to be testing after testing after testing after testing uh, from all different angles, and then uh, you propose, and then the regulatory commission, you know, raises concern here, and so it's a big, uh, like long path. So the first micro reactor is expected to be in market uh, by 20, 28 or something, 25, 28 or something like that, and. I can um, like rest assured that it's not gonna um, happen because like it will again be really delayed for. Um, and and this is I'm talking about nuclear micro reactor and then all these advanced reactors that are 300 micro reactors have a thermal output between like one and 20 or one and 10 megawatt electric. And the other designs I'm talking about advanced designs they have a uh, power output like up to let's say 200 megawatt electric. And the commercial PWRs that you see out there, they're like 1,000 electric, right? 1,000 megawatt electric. So, so what I was telling you here is, so these designs, these are all at the like research stage, but they have been tested extensively. Of course, they have issues as well, which I criticize this well in my paper I'm right now writing my uh, dissertation proposal, and I heavily criticize this uh, type of well because I'm not using it, so I have to justify and make. It, this uh, fuel has inherent safety feature. They call it like passively safe because there are a couple of reasons. One is negative uh, temperature reactivity co coefficient, which is when the temperature rises, the fission reaction stops, so the temperature cannot rise anymore. That's one thing. The other thing is, like I said, all the fission products are contained inside this, uh, this containment. Nothing comes out. So in case uh, of uh, bomb strike, uh, the reactor goes like close, uh, but the, all the fission products are containing inside this, so it's safe. Now these are, like I said, these are at the research sta state. Some has been tested on like experimental reactors and all that. 
um, and people are really excited about trisuffle. Um, um, especially as you can like imagine with micro reactors, micro reactors will be lying around right around the corner. With the new power plants, they are um, lying somewhere right like at the end, end of the town. People don't live nearby, stuff like that. But with nuclear power plants, I mean micro reactors, they'll be right around the corner, maybe in the basement of your house. Let's say 100 years from now, um, and one nuclear micro reactor can power. 1,000 or 10,000? 10, 10,000 houses for a year, right? So just a small reactor. Um, that's actually... Uh, so how is the energy transfer process? So what I understand of current nuclear reactors is it's largely the radioactive, as they break down into the fission process, they mm -hmm. heat up the water. Mm -hmm. That heated up water slowly transfers into steam mm -hmm. and is sent through turbine energy. How would that transfer of energy apply with the micro reactors? Would it still be a steam system or...? No. Like I said, yeah, no, all the advanced reactors, some of the advanced designs use, um, what's the term, like critical, I mean, they uh, steam, like, I mean, they also use steam, but like, there's a term for it, I forgot, but most of them, like 90, you know, whenever you're talking about advanced design, we're mostly talking about anything away from water, mm -hmm. uh, some, some of them incorporate water as well, but yeah, so you have liquid metal, you have gas, you have yeah, salt, molten salt, and stuff like that. So no, they're not using water. And with the PWR and BWR, um, I mean, I think I discussed this in the last class, there are two types of um, liquid water reactor, LWR. One is PWR, one is BWR, pressurized water reactor, boiling water reactor. With the BWR, the coolant becomes radioactive, the water becomes radioactive, so handling be the handling becomes messy and you know difficult and tricky and all this stuff. Um, you won't see many BWRs out there. Like most of all the reactors in the world, you see like almost all of them are PWR. So, and this is the nuclear micro reactors. As you can see, it just fits right in the back of a uh, you know semi trailer truck. So, so what? Uh, how we got to this discussion here actually? So this is the reactor. Look at this. Uh, so. Uh, so this is the reactor right here, and see turbine. Turbine is here, and heat exchanger. This is the heat exchanger. So the reactor is a small part of the design. The like the other parts actually makes up the most of the, the entire thing. So um, while we were making that plant, oh turbine building. Okay, so um, we're trying to find a photo of a turbine. But anyways, uh, any question? Uh, so yeah, so nuclear micro reactors are the future, right? Like, right now the nuclear field is dying, you know, for many reasons. Uh, renewable energy is coming up, and people are more people feel more safe and reassured with re re renewable energy versus nuclear energy because there is a taboo associated, right? Especially with the Three Mile Island, Fukushima, and the Navy Group, it makes this um, Chernobyl. And so all these accidents and um, and people just think like uh, reactor will explode like a bomb. So people think that way, right? Um, and then so that's the, that's people's perception. And then it's expensive. The biggest challenge for a nuclear power plant is it's it's so expensive when you are constructing the power plant. It's just crazy. It takes like five to ten years to install a nuclear power plant. So you will have to blindly invest your money without hoping any return, like in five, 10 years. And then the, um, the investors, they will not get their money back until like 20 years, 30 years, I don't know how many years, like crazy, like decades to get their money back because the investment is so huge, the amount of. So there are so many hurdles or so many discouragements um, for nuclear power plants and uh, governments are not in, um, investing as much because of these hurdles and safety issue and especially with those accidents now safety has become a bigger concern now you have to invest more and more money um, you know towards safety uh, designs and stuff like that so it's just becoming tougher and tougher now micro reactors look like are the saviors um, because they are small you can install them like in a year um, and then you can put them inside the back of, in the back of a tra semi -tra trailer truck, um, and then yeah, you know, off it goes. So the installment cost is less. It, it's not taking like crazy ten years to build uh, the micro reactor. It's, you are not having to wait for ten years to get your money back. 
continuous and stuff like that. Um, and it's safe, the technology is safer than the uh, current LWR, PDWRs. And, but the thing is, it's really expensive. It's not like economically, it's not feasible because it's a small reactor and all that. Um, when you are making many units, let's say 20 units, 50 units, then it is starts to become feasible and also it's still it's not uh, fight with the current market, the coal um, and renewable energy and all that. It becomes a big deal when, especially um, for remo remote regions, like in the remote areas where you have to um, take like tons of diesel to that location, it becomes expensive. Um, uh, in those areas, you can have a nuclear micro reactor, and it's like now competing economically. Um, in a space application, of course, you know you will need nuclear micro reactors, um, and then um, so that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, so nuclear micro reactor looks like the future for nuclear power. That's why right now all the designs, commercial proposals, you will see they are talking about SMR, small modular reactor, like which is below 300 megawatt electric. And actually we have a photo here. So 1000 megawatt electric is output generally around this, the nuclear power plants you see, commercial scale power plants. And the micro reactors are, it's, it, it, it here it's showing 50 megawatt electric, but like you know, most people say it's between uh, one and 10 or one or two. Very few people says 50, so I think they're trying to Kind of somehow justify their design, <laughs> but most people will say between one and ten or one and twenty uh, megawatt electric is uh, a micro reactor. I mean, there is no strict definition yet, but um, uh, like you can trust me because I'm right now researching on this. <laughs> so, okay, um, so that's that. It's through the concrete uh, wall and uh, gets into the ground and groundwater. It's called the China syndrome, I believe, which is not. The most uh, inclusive name, but I believe, is called the China syndrome. <laughs> 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 so, uh, when I I heard this, I it felt weird. Honestly, I was like, "Why China?" Well, it does look like it's got a reactor in the background. Uh, there is actually a movie called the China syndrome. I believe this is uh, the story is based on the TMI accident, uh, Tremel Island accident. But why is what is the China syndrome? I mean, the China syndrome, I believe the name came from before we look up. I believe I know the explanation. structures. I believe it, it comes from the, um, like, the explanation is that, like, when you have meltdown, the, it's called, what is called the molten fuel, it's called, there's a nice term for it. The elephant's foot. No, that's the particular oh, oh, um, Corium? Corium, right. So the corium, uh, it just um, actually penetrates through the concrete and it's so bad that it can uh, penetrate through the core of the art and reach China, something like that. I feel like some crazy explanation <laughs> like that where this came from the China scene. Oh.